Las Vegas. Thank you for joining us again on Realty Check. If you are watching our show, you're following our show, you like what we're putting out there, please take a moment to like, comment, share, tell your friends about it. Download our episode so you won't miss anything. If you're following us on iTunes or YouTube, you can follow or download. And every Thursday when we post a new show, you will get alerted that we have something new out there for you. So this is your local Las Vegas real estate news show from the professionals. So you get to hear it straight from the source of the people out there, boots on the ground in real estate. And today we have some great guests. Um, we're, we have Jay Hendricks from the Hendricks Belknap Group, Keller Williams Realty. Yeah. Jay, thank you so much for being on the show. Thanks. Thanks Do you want to tell me. us a little bit about yourself real quick? Uh, we've been at uh, the KW for about two years. We've been, uh, I've been in business about four. My wife's been in about 10. Um, we're a small family team there and in, in, in your office, uh, my, by the way. It's not uh, my office, but we're there together. Yeah, we're there together. <laughs> That's right. We are. Yes. Um, but uh, yeah, we just love it. We love uh, helping people. So yeah, you guys are awesome. So thank you. And we have Nikki Ganger with the Chaffin Group, Realty One Group. And Nikki, thank you so much for being on the show and, and tell us a little bit about yourself. Absolutely. Thank you for having us. Uh, so I'm Nikki Ganger. I am with the Chaffin Group at Realty One. I am actually a fresh agent. I've actually been in the industry for a whopping one year. Okay. Yeah. And I'm learning so much that I, I definitely love it. The only thing uh, that I, I kind of I kind of kick myself about is I wish I would have jumped in way sooner. But, yeah. But it's definitely a fun time to learn. But you are you're you're out there. You're always going after it. I see you working hard, so you're you're gonna do great. So Thank you. I, uh, I I really know. Uh, I I feel like I have a special skill of seeing potential in people. I love Got that. It. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, we start off every show talking about current single family inventory. Single family inventory. That's how many single family homes are on the market, Las Vegas and Henderson, this week. Uh, we raised a little bit by about 400 since last week. So right now, this week, we have 3,933 single family homes on the market. Still, again, I've been saying this for months now is like, you know, 6,000 and above or 8,000 and above is when it shifts to a buyer's market. We're nowhere near that. What do you guys think about that? Yeah, I definitely think that I'm noticing a little bit of a difference as far as competition goes. Uh, I've been dealing with a few of my clients and in some of the offers that we have, I'm noticing that there's not as much competition as far as offers go. I'm sure that's not the situation in every circumstance, but you can see it shifting a little bit, which gives you hope for the buyers. So it's, it does. it's a breath of fresh air. Isn't it so much nicer working with buyers when you can actually find a home? Oh yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yes. That's, that's a, that, that is good. I'm sure it feels better to be a buyer when you can find a home. <laughs> oh yeah. It does. It's even better when you're a realtor, when you're helping a buyer that can actually file a home. So it, it mm -hmm. feels good for everybody. Yeah. Um, you know, I think, I think, you know, I think it's, we're, we're moving in the right direction, I believe, to more of a balanced market. Um, however, I do, I'm, I, you know, we are all seeing where, you know, the homes that are just really beautiful in the really hot areas, it's still, you know, a little difficult on that, unfortunately. It just is what it is. Um, but there's homes out there, you know. I, yeah. I, you know, I always say, you know, it's, it's, it, it just takes a minute, you know. So just, just relax, take a breath, let us do our jobs. We're going to put you on some good homes. Yeah, absolutely. absolutely. And this week we had 428 price reductions. It was hovering around the 500s yeah. last week. So we're really not, that number's not changing much, going down a little bit. That's great. Um, but what I've been saying is I feel like the price reductions are just people coming down to reality that they can <laughs> overprice. Is, is this where, are you guys on, on board with that? Is that what you feel like is going on too? Oh yeah, a hundred percent. Yeah. I have a couple of the deals that I'm working with. They, they had some price reductions on the house that we were actually wanting to put offers in, but we were kind of waiting because we were, we knew it was not being realistic. So we kind of waited a moment and within like two days, we noticed it them decreasing, which was definitely good because yeah. they were, it was a, it was a humbling moment for them, I think. <laughs> and, and that's why I feel like I've, I've been with, um, with sellers too, you know, is, yeah. is sometimes they're like, Hey, you know, my neighbor sold the house for 40,000 above list. And I want to do that too. And then 
first two, three days, they're like, whoa, there's not like 20,000 showings. What's going on? <laughs> there's no line outside the door like it was for them. It's like, yeah, because yeah. the market changed. We're not there anymore. Yeah. So we do need to adjust and we do need to stay realistic. You know, it's, um, it would be great, but, you know, it, it's... Um, it's just they, I, I, I hate to say miss the boat, but kind of miss that boat. You know, it's already sailed. Mm -hmm. yeah. You know, it's still a great time to buy and sell real estate. It just is. You know, um, even though we're coming into this sort of like, you know, maybe there's not as many transactions happening right this minute. This is normally the way it is. You know, yeah. we, we slow down a little bit. Everybody's not looking to move their family at Thanksgiving or Christmas, right? That's right. just not what they're, they're, they're doing. However, the people that are out there now, what I find is they're focused, man, we're ready. I mean, you know, we're, you know, we're still, we're still seeing people relocate to, to Las Vegas. Um, we're having some people from Savannah, Georgia, and literally inside of a week, boom, yeah. we're, we're under contract on a house. So, I mean, it, so they're very focused people out there right now. It's a, it's a great time. Uh, I do think that, you know, just, for, you know, talking about the, you know, I think everybody thinks there's supposed to be that long line outside the house and all that kind of stuff. And that made us sort of think to, hey, I can just really push, 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 push the market. And, and that's not where we are right now. And that, that's what we're always saying, you know, or I'm always saying to my clients, listen, the market's always changing. That's what we're here for, right? Yeah. So we know what, we know how to adjust the strategies. So as the market changes, our clients are still in the best position possible. Yeah, because right. no matter what you do, you can't sell in yesterday's market. You have to sell in today's <laughs> Boy, market. Boy, wouldn't that be nice. And if you sold a home, I, I tell this to people often, like that especially is, yeah. like, you know, for sell by owners and things like that, you know, people that want to sell their own home. Sure. And they say, well, I've done this before. I, I, I sold my own home about 15 years ago. And I, I tell them, you know, if you sold your own home three months ago, you still don't know today's market. That's right. yeah. And that is in any case, as long as I've been in real estate, that's exactly how it is. Our market is constantly changing. So only the agents that are active and working and in the business every day really know the market of today. And that is, um, it, it's interesting, you know, it's, it's not like selling a car. So I'm going to jump to the end of our questions or, or one of our last questions before I get into the other ones, because we're going to talk about Zillow. Don't worry, people. We're going to talk about them. Um, but before we get into that, since we're already talking about the market, I want to go into this question is, I feel like um, right now we have a current slowdown. But again, I my personal perspective on that is every year around July, August, it's seasonality. I've been in real estate for seven years. I've seen it every year. This time of year slows down. I don't, I, I, I'm really not concerned about it. I hate to brush it off that easily, but not concerned about any of that. Um, but do you think this is a actual calm down, like we're seeing an adjustment in the market? Or do you think this is a calm before the storm? Do you feel like next year, 2022 is going to gonna go game busters again? I feel like in my professional opinion, I, I think we can all agree that we've seen as a city so much growth between, you know, sports arenas and casinos and new home development. I really feel like we're, we're also dealing with a lot of influx from California and other states that I think we just keep seeing that happening. And if it continues, I really think we're going to end up seeing continued demand, which I think will really just end up continuing the increase in pricing as well. Yeah. Yeah, I agree with that. I think Vegas is still a great, even though our prices have gone up this year, we're still affordable when you compare us to other places. I mean, I, I think it's a, I, I really think it's a great value for what you get in Vegas. So mm -hmm. what, what are your thoughts, Jay? Uh, you know, I, I agree. I, I think I think we're going to see another good year. Um, now, do I think, I mean, we've, just, we've all been just talking about it, right? The, is the market going to be the same as it is today? It's not. It's not. So next year is going to have its own things. I think we're going to start to maybe see the bad thing of maybe interest rates going up a little bit. So that's going to change. That's going to have an effect on the market. It's just going to have an effect on how people perceive the market, right? Right. And, and what, it's, what it's going to actually cost. So mm -hmm. I, I do, I, but I agree with her. I think, I think Las Vegas is a great place. I mean, we're all here. I mean, I love Las Vegas. My family loves Las Vegas. Um, we've had opportunities to move other places, but we love Las Vegas. I love Las Vegas and too. I think, that's what other, I think what other people find, they come here and go, you know, we didn't realize there is 
a community outside of the strip. <laughs> right. Hey, and it's great. Do you so, ever yeah. go to the strip? As a local, I was born and raised <laughs> in Las Vegas. I've always lived here. I mean, the only time I ever go to the strip is if like someone's in from out of town and they want to go play yeah. tourist. Like, yeah. we don't go to the strip, and it's so that amazes me that so many people from other other states yeah. think that like the strip is Vegas. Yeah. Well, the best is whenever we all, you... live in, we all live in hotels, right? I know, yeah, right? I was just gonna say that the best is whenever you're on like a plane with someone. And and they're from, you know, like Nebraska, and they're like, oh my gosh, you live in Vegas? You live in a casino? Sure. And I'm like, sure. uh huh. Yeah. Totally. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. You live in a casino. No, there's totally normal communities out here. There's suburbs and normal life. You don't have to be on the strip and enduring all the entertainment if you don't want to. Yeah. I'm going to date myself for a minute, but when I was younger, um, there was this, like, it was a t it was called a teen talk line where, like, all these teens would, like, call in this, like, group call thing on a telephone, an actual, like, wired telephone that was plugged into the wall. Wow. Yeah, that's there pretty crazy. Oh my gosh. But there was no internet, right? So I remember talking to these other other kids from like all over the, the, the country. And I said, I lived in Las Vegas. And they were like, well, yeah, what casino do you live in? I said, no, 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 I live in a house. And they were, you're lying. All these kids are like, you're lying. That's, That's impossible. Not true. That is really funny. I actually have so. a, I have a small funny story. My fiance, he actually is from Iowa and Chicago and his family, they moved out here from there. And so while their home was being built, cause he, he has a, um, a pretty large family. There's uh, 11 siblings total. So they had to have wow. a, a actual home custom built yeah. for them. So during that time, they actually lived in the Luxor. And my fiance at the time was in <clears> high school. So he would invite his friends over and they're like, where's your house at? And he's like, the Luxor. <laughs> and people were like, what? The Luxor? So he kind of had a cool little like six month stint where he That's legit funny. lived in a casino. <laughs> That's pretty awesome. That is yeah. Funny. <laughs> Pretty awesome. Yep. So, I mean, I, again, Vegas still has so much to attract. Oh, yeah. So much to attract, so much potential. And, and the city's growing. Our economy's getting better. We have more high net worth individuals than we've ever had in this city. Mm -hmm. I don't feel like our housing market is uh, in trouble. No. So I, I hope I'm right. Um, but I, I just don't see it. Well, I will say this. Sometimes I, I do get concerned or, or I, you know, when we you know, when we have like the first time home buyers and they're, you know, it, it's, it's a little challenging, you know, for them. And, you know, some of the programs aren't there right now. Mm -hmm. Hopefully we'll get some of those back. That'll help that kind of thing. Yeah. Cause I do think since our, since our market did take sort of that step ahead, it sort of made that, you know, that, that entry level houses is, has become a little more challenging, I think. It okay. has. It's become more challenging to get, and we still have, even right now during, you know, with everything slowing down a little bit, if you list anything under 300000 it's still gone in, in minutes because yeah. the investors' rent prices are skyrocketed. That's right. And investors are like, those are great rental properties. Yeah. So you're still mm -hmm. fighting in those first-time homebuyer homes. You're still fighting against cash investors. That's right. And speaking of cash investors, this is a great time to start talking about this the, the big Z. <laughs> um, <laughs> so <laughs> Zillow, um, <laughs> the big Z. Uh, we all know we all know Zillow, right? Um, so Zillow's been in the news a lot and in the real estate news a lot. And I you know, I feel kind of bad, like celebrating failure, but it's like, you know, kind of makes you feel good when you see it just because of the relationship that us as realtors have had with Zillow, right? Yeah. Um, it's been, it's been hard. I feel like for the past couple of years, we've been fighting against them and trying to explain to the consumers that like, you know, hey, selling your house to Zillow might not be the best idea, you know, and Zillow will come in and they, it, not just Zillow, the other iBuyers are guilty of it as well. They come in and they price your home. They say, oh, we'll give you this much because they know that that's what a realtor is going to comp it at. And then they knock them down, you know, later on the inspections and everything. But they have been, you know, really we've been, they've been a big competitor in business for us over these last couple of years because of them raising their prices, raising their offers. So now... Their shares have dropped. <laughs> They're um, year to date, 37%. Um, just just recently, eight point, an, another 8.6%. Um, they're offboarding 7,000 homes in a package, um, in a, a, a bundle package, and they're getting out of the real estate game and going back to like selling leads to realtors and they're done with flipping houses and all this stuff that we knew wasn't a good idea or I, I knew 
all along it wasn't a good yeah. idea, but they're, they're finally dipping out. Um, I heard a quote that said that they said, uh, you know, selling real estate, I, I don't know if this quote's exact, of course, but selling real estate's e easy, it's the people that are difficult. <laughs> so what do you guys yeah. think about all this? I was just reading an article about Zillow saying that they overloaded themselves and they, most of their homes are actually underwater right now just from mismanaging their systems. I'm assuming probably because they bought an abundance of homes at a really hot peak time and now they're trying to sell them off when the market has kind of slowed down and shifted a little bit. So I don't, I think it could be where maybe they see something on the horizon that we don't see, but I think the more likely situation is that they probably are just in over their heads and are kind of drowning at this moment. Yeah. I think the, the difference in, um, you know, doing a flipping business. And I think, you know, if, if you, you know, I, I watched the, the president talk, you know, he, had a, he did about a three minute uh, video um, just talking through the, their thought process. Uh, you know, they, they believed that they could see what, a house was going to be worth with a high degree of accuracy six months out. So they could buy it, they could renovate it, and then they would know exactly what the appreciation is. And I think we all know, and I think most people have heard this, it's one of these rules in real estate that you can maybe bend it a little bit, but you certainly can't break it. And Zillow just proved you cannot break it. On investments, you make money when you buy not when you sell right. sales, when you realize it, absolutely. Right. That's when I get, they hand me the check, <laughs> but the money that I make is how I buy it. And they went past that. They said, okay, it's not how I buy it. It's how I sell it and how I, I extrapolate that number out there. And I think after, I don't know how many thousands of homes they did, it was proven out that that doesn't work. We have to go back to the, the way it's always been is in investments, it's about how you buy it, mm -hmm. not when you sell it. Um, are they going to dip out of the real estate game? You know, actually earlier in this week, um, when I, you know, I put together this, uh, the, the show, the questions, I was like, you know, are they going to dip out completely? Cause they said they weren't buying homes or going to do flipping for the rest of the year, start back up. Then they announced, yeah, we're, we're going back to selling leads to realtors. Cause that's what we know will work. Cause they know, uh, you know, realtors want leads. So uh, that is, that that business has been doing well for them. Um, but that, I you know, I, I think they lost a lot of their realtors in this whole thing when they started, you know, becoming a competitor to the people they were selling leads to. Mm -hmm. A lot of people dipped out. Um, there were a lot of realtors that stayed and kept paying them. So what are your guys' thoughts on that? Do you think Zillow's going to be sticking around for a while? Or do you think that they're um, just humbly going to start going away? I don't think they're going to humbly start going away, uh, <laughs> you know, uh, and, and, you know, I mean, I think, uh, you know, there, there, there's room in uh, real estate's huge, you know, and there's, mm -hmm. we were talking earlier before the show, there's a lot of different ways for all of us to, to, to do well in real estate. Um, I think as far as Zillow goes, you know, they've got $4.7 billion of cash sitting on the sidelines. They're going to sell these 7,000 homes uh, for, I think, around $2.8 billion. So that means they're going to have about $7 billion of cash sitting around there. It's going to be interesting to see how they reposition that cash and get it back into the market. So, uh, yeah. I, you know, I don't think it's not going to be through flipping, but it's probably going to be through something else. Yeah. yeah. I don't know what it would be. Yeah. Selling leads to realtors, improving their tech systems, mm -hmm. all that stuff. They, they, are, they are really good at that. True. I mean, they are, you know, they've, they've really controlled that like marketing, you know, everybody when they are looking for a home, I, I mean, clients all the time go to Zillow, even though, you know, sometimes homes already sold or under contract <laughs> all the time, <laughs> all the time, all the time. <laughs> all the yeah. time. Yeah. It's really not that, uh, not yeah. quite up to date, but that's, you know, it's, it, it's okay. I, I, We'll see. Time will tell, right? Absolutely. Um, but I don't think that that's, you know, I've, I've heard a couple people saying, well, oh, is Zillow backing out of the market because the market's crashing? I think it has nothing to do with it. I just think that they didn't, they didn't, re what I, my personal feelings on it are is they didn't respect the profession enough to realize that there's seasonalities and shifts that seasoned agents yeah. and experienced agents know and see mm -hmm. because there's many times even during the peak of our market this year, I looked at offers from Zillow and I said, how can they 
possibly be making money on this? Why are they buying this home at this price? Like that doesn't, it just doesn't make sense. Yeah. Like lack of knowledge, I think. I think they just came in. They they probably thought they were going to do really well. Obviously, they wouldn't have jumped in it if they didn't think otherwise. Uh, but I, I think, like we said earlier, it's just a, a humble sit back where they're realizing that they probably should have left it to people who really do know the market in and out. But kind of like you said, I feel like Zillow, they're, they're obviously a great, a great company. They, they have done good things. So I'm sure that one day they'll probably end up jumping into something a little bit different, but maybe take their time figuring it out before they actually jump into it. So we'll see, right? Right, absolutely. <laughs> Do you guys feel like other iBuyers are going to follow suit? Hmm. I, you know, to me, the, the, uh, the, I think, you know, we just talked about it. I, I think in the iBuyers, I think they look the same way we do. You know, there's local iBuyers that we all know and, you know, that we have confidence in, that they understand. They have a buy box. They understand exactly what they're looking for. They yeah. can communicate it to me so I can help them look for it. Uh, I, think, I think those guys are always going to win the day uh, yeah. because they locally have the knowledge. You know, when you're, I think when, we always love to say, AI, 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 right, all that stuff. You know, in the end, in our areas where we're the expert that we know that that area, we can beat the AI because we're actually talking to the people. We know how they feel. We know what's on their minds. We know what's happening in their families. We know what's happening in their communities. We know why and they move into this there area. There you go. That's why exactly are they there? Right. What That's people exactly right. like this area. And, and so. that... Another thing with the um, iBuyers, I don't feel like they need to go away completely. There's, no. there's, there's, a, there's a time. There's those houses. There's some houses where like, yeah, we need an iBuyer. But the thing is, in, in the past, iBuyers have always been, yeah, they come in. They, it's a very low offer. It's below market value. It's cash. It's as is. But everyone's understanding and what the whole purpose of it is. Mm -hmm. This year, things changed with that because these eye buyers are coming in acting like they're regular home buyers and these offers were crazy and it was making things, it muddied the waters and it just showed, you know, it showed up that it, that, that wasn't a good, good idea. Mm -hmm. I agree. Yeah. Okay. So, I mean, I, th I do feel like they're going to stay around, but they're going to do what they used to do. I think so too. I think, yeah. I, I think that, I think obviously Zillow has, a, has, has, has said, look, we leaned way too much on technology. I think obviously we're all using technology and we're all using it to leverage ourselves. You have to be careful that you don't over leverage yourself yeah. in this situation. I mean, uh, that, so, but I agree with you. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Absolutely. And, um, with that, um, you know, we are definitely, uh, seeing like, some uh, different, you know, changes or whatever going on in the market with rentals. Yeah. We have a rental shortage. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know if you guys have talked to renters lately. I've talked to a few and it is so crazy how hard it is for people to find somewhere out there. Yeah. We're literally in a time again where it is more affordable to own a home than rent a home. It is more affordable to buy a home than to get in a rental it's in many so cases. Yeah. Um, so yeah. what do you... One of the things that I see that's concerning is I'm starting to see, hear about, and talk to um, families that they're, um, you know, they're, they're families. They're working. They have income. Mm -hmm. um, they are, you know, maybe they had a hardship over the last year and they couldn't pay rent. Um, maybe they have, uh, you know, their, their landlords just decided to sell because the prices they want to, you know, sell while the market's where it's at. Um, different reasons they've had to move out into other rentals and lower credit, lower things. They're not finding places to live. Yeah. Um, I feel like we're might be facing a, a homeless issue. That's not, you know, I mean, that is actual like families with children that, that are working that just can't find somewhere to live. Do you guys, do you guys see that or are you concerned about it? Yeah, I feel like I, do, I I know exactly what you're talking about. I feel like the the restrictions to actually move in or the requirements to move into a rental, I almost feel like has tightened. I don't know yeah. if you guys it, no, it the has same way, tightened. It which has. Is, it is sad because it, the prices have gone up. It's tightening. There's been a lot that people have gone through in 2020, and I mean, still into 2021. Um, I think we're always going to face some type of homelessness in all cities, but I do overall think that we're kind of walking in uncharted waters. 
The one thing that I do notice though, and I don't know if you guys feel the same way, but I've been noticing a lot more affordable housing projects that are being built around the city. Mm -hmm. And so hopefully that will somewhat get ahead of some potential homelessness and try to, you know, m not make the situation worse. Right. Yeah. Right. Yeah, it's, it's, it's difficult in mm -hmm. getting people in, in rentals. I mean, it's, it's very difficult. There, it, we certainly have a shortage of that. Um, I think, though, you know, you're seeing whole communities being built for rent now. It's yeah. built to rent. Yeah. Um, I think that's going to hopefully hopefully up. help us catch up. Right. But I think we're way behind, just like you said. I, but I don't, I don't know what the answer is. It's I a problem. No, I don't know what the answer is, too. <laughs> it's a problem that we didn't see coming, but I'm seeing it right now being a sure. problem. And it's... Uh, it's just concerning me. I'm it like, is. where is this going to go? Yeah. There's no, you know, I've had people ask me, there's no, um, you know, if, if there's programs, if there's something out there for this. And it's not, in all cases, it's not even an affordability issue. These right. people have income. They can do, you know, credit. You have bad credit. You know, it's like the, we can't fix this, pre this problem instantly, mm -hmm. but it's yeah. going back and like really just letting these people know that like, Home ownership is so much more secure right. than being in a rental because you never know when that landlord's going to say, you know, I'm selling. Mm -hmm. um, and, and it's so, you know, it's so hard um, and it, it puts people in an, in an issue. It, it's really, you know, just getting awareness out there of how important it is to get on track of getting towards home ownership or yeah. getting there as soon as possible. Um, but it, it is, you know, in the time being when they have 30 days to move, that's a... You know, there's, there's nothing we can do about that right now. Mm -hmm. um, before we close out today, um, we are going into the holiday season. So a lot of people and a lot of sellers think, oh, no, I don't want to list during this time of year because it's, you know, not a great seller's market. Sometimes people need to list and sometimes um, there's benefits to listing during the holiday season. What do you guys feel like are some of the benefits? So I think, uh, like kind of like what you said, a lot of a lot of sellers out there would probably prefer not to list their home because they don't want people, you know, from the public being able to access their property for showings. They're most likely holding family gatherings and events, and don't really want people to see the chaos of them packing. So I think a lot of that gets postponed till after the first of the year. But for those people who are actually wanting to list their home during this time, I feel like there's huge advantages because, for one, we're already dealing with really low inventory. And as we enter into these next couple of months approaching those holidays, the inventory really does start to lessen even more. So I think that, you know, there's still a lot of active buyers out there. They want a home before the holidays hit. So I think that it's, it does kind of create lower supply, but higher demand for those people that are actually listing their home. And I think that just will attract more offers and hopefully higher offers at that point. Yep, absolutely. Uh, yeah, I, I, you know, I, I actually walked in yesterday into a home where I saw my very first Christmas tree. At this <laughs> I thought, I thought normally it's like around Thanksgiving right. you start to see that, but I guess we were getting a jump on it. They yep. started but soon. It was funny. So we walked in, uh, and the clients were like, "Oh, look at their tree!" And it was so beautiful. And you know what? Uh, this because I, I knew you'd you'd sent this question out. I think it's one of the real opportunities where. Normally, we depersonalize homes to mm -hmm. list them, right? This is a great opportunity to really show how homey your home is. I know mm -hmm. it sounds a little funky, but, you know, I mean, because the lady was just sitting there going, oh, I can see our kids here and the Christmas and the tree. Christmas and I was like going, I was totally going like, of course, I didn't expect a Christmas tree in the house, right. just to be honest with you. Uh, so I wasn't <laughs> totally ready for that one. However, uh, it was, you know, I, I really came away thinking exactly this question going, you know, this really is a great opportunity to really showcase your home in a time and in, in a way that you really wouldn't be able to do it in any other time of the year. Right, it's right. a really good kind point. Of, Christmas so. tree, mm -hmm. even fireplace. And oh, Vegas. fireplaces! Do turn we that never puppy. use the fireplace? But you turn that on turn for that a thing showing, on. and it's just <laughs> yeah. it's the it's the you it know, lights the whole in the room. ambiance of everything. It just gives you that like it really home. Does. We're home feeling. It really does. It, it, I, I feel like it emotionally hits the buyer. That's it. It really yeah. does. It lets them connect to the home. Yeah. And man, you can really see it when somebody comes into a house and they really connect with this home or this community. You really say, man, that, you know, they're it just like, all right, let's do it. Memories. Let's do this thing. Yep. Yeah. No, it, yeah. It, it does. I feel like that's yeah. true. And I also think that the buyers that are shopping during the winter seasons are probably more motivated. They are. There are a group of buyers, which I feel, I am so like, I feel so strongly that like 
this group of buyers needs to be larger. There should be more buyers shopping this season than spring. Why do people wait till spring? Yeah. Do they like competing against yeah. other people? Like what's going on there? But, it's a but great time. There, is, there is a group of buyers that are shopping during this season and they seem to be more motivated than, uh, than, than usual. And they're also, a lot of them are on the timeline. They are determined to buy before the first of the year hits. Mm -hmm. So I feel like you have more motivated buyers. They're, they're very, they're a lot more committed to the outcome. And we just, it, it's, um, it's not a bad time to list. Yeah. Not at all. Well, second, so May in, in the, in the month, in the, in the year that May is the most people come that relocate to our city in May for jobs and things like that. Okay. The mm -hmm. second is December. Yeah. So okay. those people, they're like, hey, I got a job. I got to get the kids in school before they start back up in January. You know, hey, and so that goes to those focused, motivated buyers, right? They're relocating from, like I, yesterday, we relocated somebody from Savannah, Georgia to, to Las Vegas. So, you know, it's just, it's it's a great time. It really yeah. is. There yeah. are buyers out there. Yeah. They certainly are. Absolutely. Well, guys, it's been a great show. I did have a couple more questions that we did not get to, but that's that's okay. We have a lot to talk about. So, um, Jay, how do people reach you if they want to get a hold of you? Well, we're at the Keller Williams Marketplace. We're the Hendricks Belknap Group. Um, you can reach me at, at jhendricks, my last name, dot hbg at gmail.com. And his info's on the screen, too. Uh, it is. It's right there on the screen. So, <laughs> yep. yeah, you can just reach me right there. Right there. Right there. <laughs> and you want to tell people your phone number for the people there listening? Yeah, it's 702-335-6077. All right. Awesome. Nikki, how do people get a hold of you? So uh, I'm, again, located at Realty One Group. We're on St. Rose and Eastern. If you ever want to pop in, feel free. Uh, otherwise, if you'd like to chit-chat, my phone number is 702-715-2380. And my Instagram handle is Nikki, N-I-K-K-I underscore your Vegas homegirl. Oh, I love it. <laughs> I love that. Yeah. And you guys know how to reach me. Um, Trish Williams, you can always call me 702-308-2878. I look forward to seeing you guys next week on Realty Check-In. Please take a moment, like, comment, share, send us a review. We'd love to hear your feedback. Thank you guys. I'll see you next Thursday.